Welcome to Naresai Technologies. This is Ram Chandar. In this video, I am going to talk about whenever JVM provide the memory for subclass, is JVM provide the memory for superclass or not? Whenever we creating an object for subclass, how many objects are created by the JVM? Then if the objects are creating only one, if that object is belong to superclass or not? Is there any special memory location for superclass or not? So, these type of interesting issues, internal points, each and everything I am going to explain by using diagrammatically, programmatically also. Now, most of the students feels like whenever JVM is providing the memory for whenever we creating an object for subclass JVM will provide the memory. According to last video most of the people felt and most of the people feels like JVM will provide the memory for superclass also that is the wrong one. Whenever we create an object for superclass then only JVM will provide the memory for superclass. Whenever we creating an object for subclass JVM is not providing the memory for superclass JVM only provide the memory for subclasses. Then maybe you guys are getting the doubt like so whenever we loading the byte code or whenever we creating an object for subclass superclass non-static loading phase and initialization phase is executed now. So there may be a chance of what here allocating the memory in non-static loading phase no allocating the memory for non-static data for superclass within the subclass area nothing but within the subclass memory area. So, let me show you that one. So, our point is whenever JVM is whenever we creating whenever we creates object for subclass JVM only provides JVM only provides memory for subclasses subclass not for not for superclass. So, whenever we create object for subclass JVM only provides the memory for subclass not for superclass. So, let me show you one thing first let me go through in the wrong manner wrong assumption later we will compare right assumptions. Now, int a equal to triple 1 int b equal to what here triple 2 and one more thing class b extends of a here I am writing like int c triple 3 int d like triple 4. Now, most of the people feels like and most of the students thinking like JVM is provide the memory for a class as well as as well as JVM is providing the memory for B class. JVM is providing the memory for S class as well as JVM is providing the memory for B class that is what your wrong assumptions that is not correct one. So, this is a S memory memory and uh, here we have A value like a triple 1 and B value like a triple 2 and here this is what your B memory and here we have C value triple 3 and D value triple 4. Now, what happen here? A value is coming from superclass to subclass and B value triple 2 is coming from superclass to subclass. So, total here how many memories here? 2 memories. This is 100 percent is wrong assumptions. JVM is ok whenever we creating an object for subclass JVM will load superclass uh, non-static loading phase and initialization phase and constructor, but not providing the memory for superclass non-static data in a superclass memory area. It will provide the memory for non-static data of superclass within the subclass memory. So, here we need to design like this. This is what here only B's memory this is B class memory, this is B class memory. In the B class memory only A value triple 1, B value triple 2 and C value 
triple three and d value d value what is this triple four so jvm provides memory for what is that a and b a and b is belongs to what here super class jvm will provide the memory for a and b of a class nothing but super class within the which area b memory area only not in the separate memory area like a so the final conclusion is whenever we creating an object for subclass jvm will provide the memory for only subclass whatever the data which we have in the superclass the data will come and placed into where your subclass memory area this is what your theoretically explanation for more clarity purpose i written some diagrams but don't believe the theoretical points when we are going to uh, get the confidence when we are going to believe 100% is once everything is programmatically proved we can say that statement is what here valid which statement so this statement so let me show you how to prove this concept by using what here programming language or programming concept so let me take here notepad let me take here notepad in the notepad i'm taking here class a and in the a class i have some data int a equal to triple 1 int b equal to what here triple 2 and here class b extends of a here i'm writing like int c equal to triple 3 and int d equal to triple 4 good now here i'm taking for executing program purpose uh, what i'm doing here is i'm taking one class what is that class a test class in the test class i'm writing like a public static void main string array yes now here i'm creating an object for b and new b now here i'm writing like a system dot out dot println here obj dot a let me copy this code and paste four times here 1, 2, 3 and 4, 4 times for 4 variables, this is the A and B, this is the C and D. Now let me save it, what is that file name, test.java, saves. Now let me execute the program, what is that, java C, test.java, successfully compile, java test, yes, execute also. So, whenever we creating an object for subclass, JVM will load so superclass non-static loading phase and initialization phase. Superclass non-static loading phase and initialization phase means what here? A will get the memory and fill it with the triple 1. B will get the memory and fill it with the triple 2. In the loading and initialization phase. But those loading and initialization phase will be happen within the memory area of B. That is the clarity. So, let me show the proof. Okay. The variables got the memory non-static variables so if you want to communicating with the non-static variables what we required object we required we created object these variables got the memory and by using that memory we are printing the data good now the first proof so before going to this one let me give a quick review already we had a lot of discussion on top of this topic in the previous videos those are what this as well as what here super this always trying to this always pointing to what here current class current class or current object super it is always pointing to what here current object it's super class nothing but simply we can say for example this is pointing the b class then super is pointing to what here it's a super class it's a super class nothing but what here a class here it will pointing to either super class or super object this always pointing to current object or current class super always pointing to what here either super class or super object so now let me take one constructor here i'm taking one constructor here b of zero arguments now here i'm writing like system dot out dot println system dot out dot println system dot out dot println now i'm using what this this means what here current memory current memory means here i'm creating an object for b class nothing but subclass I'm pro I'm printing subclass memory here with the help of this keyword 
so let me use uh, let me write this also good now if you want to know the identification number we have one method which is available in the object class that is what here hash code method so let me compile and printing this uh, identification number very nice what are the small spelling mistakes that is printl method not here i am written like extra a now so java c test dot java good clear the screen and java test so what the output 5433634 so this memory identification number given by the jvm now according to functionality of the super we can say super is always pointing to super class data now assume assume if whenever we creating an object for subclass if the jvm is providing the memory for super class in that particular scenario definitely super is pointing to which class memory super class memory so if the two identification numbers are created by the jvm definitely those two if the two objects are created by the jvm definitely those two objects will have two different identification numbers that means this will pointing to one identification number as well as super is going to pointing one more identification number so let me check whether those those are printing a different identification numbers or not so see the see the output no that means both this and super is pointing to what your same memory so why super is also pointing to same memory the reason is there is no memory for super class that's why automatically it will pointing to what subclass memory so according to this program we can say whenever we creating an object for subclass jvm only providing the memory for subclass not for its super class uh, one more way of explaining this concept memory type this is what your memory identification number one more concept is what your memory type so if you want to know the memory type nothing but memory class memory type class we should use two methods get class dot get name methods so those two methods are one method is available in the object one more method is available in the java dot lang dot class so lot of discussion we have related to get class and get name method in the coming videos not especially in this video so simply here observe guys i'm using subclass this now here i'm using this dot get class dot this dot get class dot get name this dot get class dot this dot get class dot get name yes now if you observe this program java c test dot java and java test this is means what your current object here i am creating an object for which class b class nothing but sub class so jvm providing the um uh, providing memory identification uh, memory type what is the type here b type now assume if we have memory for if jvm creating memory for super class so that memory is pointed by assume that memory is pointed by super keyword in that particular time we are getting the class name like what here a itself java c java c test dot java and java test see the output what is the output we are getting in the both the scenarios we will get b only that means memory is only for b class not for a class according to these two things by using one identification number by using memory type we can say jvm is providing the memory for sub class not for super classes so this is the way we can explain we can give the proof about that term. concept here i hope you enjoy this video for more videos please subscribe narasati channel catch you in the next video thank you